everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Purpose and Profit Sisterhood podcast. I am your hostess, Jeanette Anderson, the Bodacious, and I'm here today with the fabulous Alina Nikishina, right? Did I say it right? Nikishina. Nikishina. Yeah, you're good. You say you say it with a very lovely Russian accent on it. <laughs> I, I don't. Um, so welcome. I'm glad you're here today, Alina. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And and I have had the pleasure of um, doing some of Alina's work with her, and it was really, really, really lovely. So we're going to talk a bit about what she does, how she does it, but also how that can support you to really get clear about transforming self-sabotage and how to turn that into success. So that's what today's topic is about. So I will give you the official bio on her, then we'll find out the juicy behind the scenes, you know, um, salacious stuff. And then we will uh, launch into learning why we get into self-sabotaging behavior like busyness and procrastination and perfectionism and stress and self-criticism and self-doubt and all of that. And how do we change those patterns effectively? So uh, Alina specializes in subconscious change and helps conscious leaders and creative souls transform self-sabotage, fear, and inner criticism into impact, success, and well-being. Part of what makes her work unique is a method called core transformation, which is a gentle process that allows us to work with different parts of ourselves that are stuck in an unwanted pattern of behavior and create profound inner change without having to struggle or rely on willpower. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So the especially rely on willpower part. So again, welcome. And I'm excited to talk about this because, uh, I've done a lot of personal growth facilitation of courses and programs and teaching coaching certification programs, a lot of inner work over the decades personally, but also teaching it and facilitating it. And a lot of, there's a lot of thought in the, in the marketplace that a lot of that needs to be hard or really challenging, or you got to dig and you got to, you know, really um, root things out but you have a very different approach and a very gentle, subtle, soft kind of approach to change, which is fascinating. So we're gonna talk about how and why that actually works versus what most people think works. Uh, so Alina, tell me a little bit about you that we wouldn't guess from reading your bio or going to your website or anything like that. What's something that would surprise mm -hmm. people? Well, thank you for that lovely introduction and so something that you would find on my website is that I used to be a former accountant, but what I don't talk a ton about on my website yet or on, in my bios or anything is that I'm actually um, co-leading a grassroots movement for the accounting industry to inspire accountants to um, create positive change in the world. So, you know, we, we meet and we talk about things like uh, regenerative entrepreneurship, post-growth entrepreneurship, um, changing our money stories to mm. be more like of abundance instead of like lack or needing to hoard, right? Um, right. We explore like humane and ethical um, workplaces. Like I'm excited to talk to you about ageism uh, mm. later on and things like um, justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah. So basically really? social justice, climate change, these kinds of things are really important to me. Awesome. And way to get your people galvanized around, like the people that, that care about that, having a conversation within a, within an industry, within a silo, um, because you get one another. And when yeah. you have that common interest, then, then there's already a foundation there of understanding and connection. So that's brilliant to bring those two pieces together. Um, uh, I just thought of it while you were talking, Jill Lublin runs something called kindness circles mm -hmm. and, um, the profit of kindness, but, um, mm -hmm. the, is the book that she wrote. Uh, it might be a good book to discuss, or she might be a good person to come uh, to come and talk about, um, the profit of kindness. Cause Very it's good. That sounds right up our alley. P-R-O-F-I-T. So as opposed to being a prophet. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit about your why. How did you get into this work? Um, 
not just how did you get into this work, but what is the theme, the thread that weaves throughout your life that has you drawn to this? Mm. Well, how I got into this work, I would say it wasn't a very deep why, right? It was more of like, okay, how can I combine some of these strengths and assets that I have and my experience and how can I create a business out of it, right? So I would say I was in the very beginning just kind of scratching the surface as to my deeper why, Um, because as I have grown my business and been on this entrepreneurship journey, it became very apparent to me that I need something deeper, right? Because <laughs> it's often a challenging journey. It pushes your every edge. And so that actually became part of my why is there's like a spiritual aspect to it for me in that I have I consider entrepreneurship to be an incredible vehicle for personal and soul growth mm-hmm. because it stretches my every edge. Mm-hmm. And also as to what I was talking about earlier with the County Alchemy Network and the things that we're doing in there. So we're basically changing paradigms, right? So we, we currently have a lot of unhealthy practices in our business systems, in our economics, um, in the world, basically that, I mean, prioritize profit above everything else pretty much. And so, or we have like uh, hidden biases Um, against certain races or like, um, you know, genders or lack of genders, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So how can we create paradigm shifts on a subconscious level to where we can have a world where we all thrive? And this is also part of my deeper why. So how can I help not only myself wake up from these spells and like programming that I've been born into of... um, frequencies that are basically rooted in lack and control power over um fear right yeah uh so how can i help myself not be in those programs and how can i help other people right that's uh beautiful questions and i often say that um the benefit of a good coach or a good process or a good Uh, program is that they get you to ask more powerful questions rather Mm -hmm. than providing answers and and those are really brilliant questions in terms of of how do you frame that why or how do you live into your why more effectively Um, and so were you always the person who was looking for the deeper meaning and the deeper reasons and so forth even when you were little Maybe not when I was super little, because I mean, grow. so I grew up in Russia till age nine and then moved to America, which a lot of, you know, a lot more opened up after that. But um, because I feel like there was a lot of um, just kind of control and being told that things are a certain way when I was growing up, hence why I'm also doing this work to uh, unravel a lot of that, to rewire a lot of that. And um so, but yeah, definitely in my teenage years, I started questioning a lot of stuff and asking questions and getting into the mystical things and yeah. yeah. And so, so you've got a very interesting right brain, left brain, um, inner outer kind of uh, journey because you came from Russia. We have certain kind of notions around that culture. Yeah. Uh, true or not, probably not. Um, But also you're an accountant, we have notions around that kind of person and and how they think and so forth. And yet you have this real uh, soft, intuitive, um, internal or spiritual kind of perspective. How, what was your journey? What was, so, so you came to uh, North America, and then you became an accountant? Did you like, (laughs) right into that what was your journey yeah well so I was a I was nine when I came so definitely went through you know schooling and exactly so my parents were very they really hammered in like education right it's like this is the most important thing is that you get good grades so that you can get a job and then you can have the job that's stable and you never lose it and then you retire at some age and then (laughs) That's pretty much it, right? Hopefully you also have a husband and kids in the meantime, all the all the traditional things. All that, yeah. Yeah. And so 
and I was fortunate that they helped me with some finances to go to college. So I was like, okay, I got to do something that actually creates a job out of this. I can't just like do something that I want to do. Because I had ideas of maybe like doing psychology or maybe even philosophy um, or something like that, but it just didn't make sense. So, and that's okay. I was somewhat good at math. It seemed to make sense. I knew it would be a stable job. So yeah, I did go into accounting, got my master's degree um, in the accounting world. It's, if you're going to be going through all that kind of schooling, it, it's worth it to get your certified public accountant license. Uh, in America. So I went and got that. And then, yeah, just started working and was doing that for a decade. Uh, and then what happened was I actually was in a position that I really loved. Uh, I loved the firm that I was in. I was doing a lot more than just accounting. I started to get into sales and marketing and like helping the firm um, expand. And yeah, so the firm was sold and the basically I decided not to stay at that point and uh, start a business with my old boss, actually the guy who sold the company and some other people. So um, that just opened up a whole new level of skill that I didn't really know I had, but it was kind of, you know, kept behind a curtain <laughs> a little bit <laughs> But because I started, what we did was we created a professional e-learning program for entrepreneurs okay. and I was using a lot of professional e-learning tools that I had no idea existed but you know I was creating like uh, little games and animated videos and writing content and recording my voice and like designing stuff on Canva and doing marketing materials and going to conferences and like there was just a lot <laughs> that how was long ago was that I'm sorry what how long ago was that oh that was uh 2018 Okay, so that was before some of these things were common in the uh, social media and online world. So you were kind of at looking at some leading edge things as well. Yeah, for sure. And so, I mean, that was a that was a very interesting time <laughs> because you know, I I left my work and didn't no longer had that stable salary for a while. Um, there was just a lot that was changing. And I actually started working with a life coach and she helped me at the basic level start to become aware. Cause before that, I mean, I was kind of dabbling into self-development and stuff like that, but it's not, it wasn't a part of my daily life. Right. Um, I just was successful <laughs> because I was playing the rules of the, you know, traditional life game. Yeah. Um, so uh, she really helped me become more self-aware to start setting boundaries, uh, to just start asking these really powerful questions. And anyway, after like two years, I decided to leave. I finished my project <laughs> and I decided to leave the company. And yeah. at that point it was like a fork in the road, right? Like, should I do accounting or should I like start something else? Right. And my experience with my coach and also building that business opened up the business, the, uh, the awareness of the online world, the online coaching world. I'm like, okay, so I've always really liked helping people and I've had a lot of patience for mm, just supporting people in general. Maybe yeah. coaching would be good and I can do like a combination of business coaching and mm -hmm. maybe accounting or something like that. <laughs> so that's what I started doing. And I think that opened up a deeper layer of mm. like, wow, my identity is really shifting from who I used to be to who I am now. And that created a lot of internal struggle and created a lot of self-sabotage. Right. Um, and it really, I was doing a lot of coaching and I was, I was becoming a coach. I was getting certified at that point. And what I noticed was at some point, the tools that I was using with cognitive coaching were no longer helping me. It was like, I was so aware of all my problems. Yes. <laughs> but awareness is the booby prize <laughs> until it actually shifts. Then all we do is we're aware of the gap, but that yes. sometimes actually makes it even worse. Exactly. Uh, and so, so how did you um, start coming to work that effectively helped you with the self-sabotaging behavior? Yeah, I kind of just started telling people about my problems, right? I was like, I, 
I keep having these patterns. People are telling me I need to just stop them. I need to just change my mindset. And I'm a pretty smart girl. I think I can follow instructions and I'm trying my best, but it's not working. Yes. And so I, I, I think it was one of my friends who was like, have you looked into subconscious change work? And I'm like, what is, what is subconscious change work? And so I looked into hypnosis as kind of the initiation into the world of this, um, of this work. And, you know, it, it helped me a lot in the beginning. And then I, uh, the, the kind of hypnosis that I learned required, there's a lot of different kinds, it worked, but the one I learned required people to listen to an audio consistently for multiple weeks or days. And I enjoyed that for a while. And then I was like, what else is out there? Like, how else can I <laughs> create change without having to do this? Right. So that's when I found other methods and I stumbled upon Andreas NLP, who is, who, who teaches the core transformation method that I do now. Mm -hmm. And that it, it was beyond just learning a method for me. This is now connecting on so many different levels, like my deeper why of, um, coming home to who I really am so that I can be my most authentic frequency in the world that the world really needs. So I can help other people do that. Uh, gosh, there's just, yeah, it's been really great. That's awesome. So tell people what parts work means. What does that mean for the people that haven't heard that phrase before? Yeah. So to the person listening, you've likely found yourself using language. Like there's a part of me that wants to I don't know, be really successful in business and have a bunch of clients and have a bunch of eyes on me and <laughs> make money. Right. And then there's a part of me that, you know, hates marketing or is afraid of putting myself out there or hates how I look on camera or uh, I don't know, thinks sales is icky, something like that. Right. Yeah. So the variations on the not enoughness stories that we tell. Yeah. 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 And that creates an inner struggle, right? So there's parts of you that want to go forward. And then there's parts of you that are like, wait a minute, let's, that's too much, too fast. I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. Right. So but what usually ends up happening is some kind of freeze mode, right? You don't end up doing anything at all, or you do end up doing things, but it's like busy work, or you end up focusing on things like updating your website for 30 hours, <laughs> <laughs> yes. when you could have been networking or something like that, that could have really moved the needle forward. Exactly. Or going and watching Netflix or playing video games on your phone or various other things like that. And so um, what do you think is at the root of inner criticism or inner resistance? So what is, what is inner resistance trying to tell us? Mm. Well, according to, if we use the principle of the method that I use now, this resistance, and it shows up in different ways. It can show up as maybe a thought, like uh, maybe an inner critical part that's like, oh, you can't do this, right? Or like a feeling. So maybe you know, your stomach just kind of wraps up in a ball or tight when you're trying to do something that, that you know is going to stretch you. Or you just find yourself doing something, right? Like every time I'm going to do this thing that is scary, I end up on my phone for two hours, right? So it's one of those things. And based on the principles of core transformation, all of our parts that have these behaviors, they have a positive purpose. So there's something positive that they're trying to do for you uh, underneath these behaviors or feelings or thoughts. Right. And so through this method, we can actually discover what it is that's positive that they want. And at the as you go through the process, you basically ask what they want and then you discover what they want. That's even more important right. through that. Right. So a lot of times when I'm working with clients, one of the things that <clears throat> the phrase that I use or a, an approach that I use is when they're shitting on themselves or judging themselves or whatever is, or, or having resistance or blocks or stalls is just what is the need that's trying to be met? Because yeah. underneath whatever is going on, there's a need that's just trying to be met and there's nothing wrong with the need. It just may not be being expressed in a very productive way or lived into in a very productive or not getting met uh, most often. Um, and, and you mentioned earlier about um, people say, well, you just have to have, you know, 
willpower or force yourself or whatever. Um, whenever I hear a client or someone say, I just need to literally just got off the phone with someone and she said, I just need to. And I just kind of tilted my head at her because we've worked together a long time. And she said, yeah, I heard it. Um, Cause just means that uh, it's not going to happen. I guarantee it because <laughs> if it was just a matter of just doing it, you would have already done it. Absolutely. You know? So that's coming from that willpower. Well, I just need to push myself further or differently or harder or s- something than I have in order to get the results, but that doesn't work. So what does work having that conversation with that part, but how does that shift things? Yeah. And so when we ask the part continuously what it wants that's deeper, eventually what happens is all all of these parts that we work with, they reach what's called a core state of being. And this core state of being is something that you can have regardless of your circumstances in your life. And regardless of people, it's just literally like something that is. Mm. And what what happens when your system experiences these core states is it becomes an automatic resource that we then through some processes integrate in and from that state of being it's like being in a at a different perspective point right so because when we're experiencing life uh my my interpretation of reality is perception like perception equals reality because everybody can look at the same exact thing and have a completely different experience of it, right? So this is what this method does, is it allow it guides you naturally, without force, into a really, really resourceful state that you can just have, regardless of things happening a certain way. And then from there, you can take a look and be like, so from this really resourceful state, how does that transform this belief that I used to have that I need to work really hard or that I need to push or that I need to be afraid or control things or I need to be in lack right and generally already from there there's a lot of transformation that happens on a subconscious deep level that says oh I actually don't need to do all that I can just be really resourceful what would you say to people who may have a real hard time wrapping their brain around the fact that the solution to doing is not more doing, it's actually who we're being? Because <laughs> for more, most people in our society, that's, you know, the whole notion of be, do, have is prevalent in the personal development world, but And that it's in that order. But in most of society, we live in a do-do society, right? Where it's a lot about do, maybe have, but to have, you got to do a lot, you know, and very little about the being. So how, how do you help people wrap their brain around that notion? Yeah, well, I would say when I do core transformation with people, they come to that conclusion on their own because this, this core state that I was describing earlier, it's generally a felt experience in the body it's not some kind of mental concept of like you know you gotta be committed or be consistent or be um i don't know confident right it's actually something that you experience and then you can begin to see naturally if you do enough of this method how these states of being transform you from the inside out um but i think I mean, I was definitely stuck in that same paradigm before I started doing this work. I just thought that as long as I do, then I can be successful because that's literally how my perception was that life worked out there. And the the, the truth is, is that I was actually being somebody. I was being consistent. I was being determined. Uh, I was being a person who pushed and like shoved and yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So, well, and it's, it's here. Funny, I just heard um, those being um, uh, as a, as a sneaky form of doing. Being confident is really a way of doing things. Being consistent is a doing. Mm-hmm. It's not even a being. It's not an experience. It's a it's a doing. 
And so we are really sneaky about that as us human beings, because um, just being in an experience doesn't seem like enough. Like we got to do more. We got to do more than just be love or be, you know, peace or be whatever it is that is that core experience that people come to. Um, so how, how would you, what's a tip that you can give people um, that they can take away and do themselves to support themselves with getting clearer? Yeah. So yeah, you can take this parts work approach and maybe next time you experience some kind of thought, uh, internal, you know, chatter or a feeling that you don't like, or you're doing some kind of, you have a tendency to like, you're like, I want to get on my phone. Right. So you can notice that happening, become aware of it. Yeah. And then in the moment, just ask yourself, where is the part of me that's generating this feeling, thought, or behavior? And it can be somewhere in your body, somewhere around you. And then you can kind of just imagine that it's maybe like a little person or a character or something, this part of you that wants to do this thing. And you can um, just thank it for being there because it has a positive purpose, even though we don't know what it is. And just that alone, sometimes the acknowledgement of, hey, this is happening. And it's a part of me that wants something positive, and I'm going to thank it just that alone can sometimes create more ease. Mm -hmm. um, but then you can just ask it, what do you want? And see what it says. <laughs> right. Right. Well, and, and, you know, there's a, a phrase, what you resist persists. So if we've got that resistance to whatever that behavior is, it likely just entrenches it more. If mm. I'm resisting avoidance, then I'm probably going to avoid my resistance because, and it gets me into this loop, uh, especially for those of us who tend to be oppositionally defiant, which most entrepreneurs are, um, we tend not to, um, like to be told what to do. And then we get into a situation where all we do all, all of our life is tell ourselves what to do. Um, so it's a bit of a conundrum. So uh, tell people how they can find out more about you or connect with you. Yeah. So on my website at alinanyakishina.com or on Instagram at heyalinan and also on LinkedIn. I mean, you'll probably find me. I don't think there's another, maybe there is, but she's in the UK. <laughs> okay. So, um, and, and what's your preferred platform? Where are you most? Usually on Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and you've got a newsletter that people can get on and does, what does that include or what does it have for them? Yeah. So it's called subconscious success Sunday. And every Sunday I create some kind of tip or trick or awareness point of how people can begin to work with their subconscious mind and shift on that really deep inner to outer level so i love it subconscious sunday that's awesome uh and you also have an offer for people who are listening to this and who may want to come do some core transformation work with you yeah i'm happy to offer 20 percent off uh, people's first session if they just mention your podcast Beautiful. So remember to reach out to Alina. Um, her contact information will be in the show notes below. Uh, and mention the Purpose and Profit Sisterhood podcast so that you get 20% off. And I, I would just want to say, and I don't often do this, but um, I did have a session with her because she offered it so that I could experience her work and talk about it more knowledgeably. And it actually was a extraordinarily gentle which is very interesting because typically subtle doesn't work with me subtle just doesn't it has to be pretty loud to land generally but um since then alina which was this was just last week i have deleted the games off my phone and i am clearer on my focus because what we worked on was some avoidance behaviors that were going on that were not supporting me um and what I found was, um, so there may not be like a direct conscious connection to it, but there was just a gentle kind of release mm -hmm. of the hold that that had on me. And often we have a hold on something because it's again, trying to serve us. There's fear that motivates it. There's things going on under the surface. So even if it just loosens it up a little bit, 
that makes it so much easier to deal with. Uh, and so I've noticed some shifts in my behaviors since our session. So I highly recommend you go check it out, connect with her, take advantage of the lovely discount and do some uh, core transformation work around those things that you've really been um, feeling like they're undermining your success because we are, we are all things. We are spiritual, emotional, physical, mental beings. We need as entrepreneurs to deal with all of the aspects of who we are, because all of it has an impact on our business. All of it has an impact on how we make the difference we make in the world, how we are successful or not. Um, Michael Gerber says in his book, I'm rereading, uh, Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. Well, I read the E-Myth and recommended it for decades, but I'm reading The Entrepreneur Within. But in all of his work, he talks about the fact that most of us are not entrepreneurs. We are um, technicians or practitioners who are having an entrepreneurial seizure, <laughs> which I think is a hilarious comment, because most of us have not dealt with what's going on and holding us back. So it keeps us small, keeps us playing in our comfort zone. And anybody that you can get to support you in moving out of your comfort zone, like Alina got a, a coach that helped her expand outside into the possibilities of who she's being now, that's really valuable. So get a coach, book a session with me, get unhooked, book a session or can with Alina and connect with those parts of you that just are doing their best to help, but perhaps not in very effective ways. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, thank you so much, Alina. What's one last thought you'd like to leave everyone with when it comes to transforming self-sabotage into success? Yeah, I would just say that if you have been having something persistent, like a behavior or a thought or something like that, that you're like, ah, oh, this is just, I've had it my whole life and I don't know if it can even change. I just want to give you some hope and maybe it feels like you've tried everything. Um, I, I've also felt this way. And until I came across this method, until I came across a very specific subset of self-development, I also did not experience a lot of change. So I just want to give you some hope and maybe inspiration for opening up your mind to what else is out there and exploring that. Beautiful. And my friends, it doesn't have to be hard. So yes. <laughs> let it be gentle. Let it be let it be yummy and let it actually make the difference. So thank you for being here, Lena. And more importantly, thank you for being such a lovely call to gentle transformation. Uh, I think that voice is needed a lot more in our world, in a world that is all about push and drive and shoulds and have tos. So thank you for being that beautiful voice of invitation to something more gentle. Thank you. All right, everybody have a wonderful week. Be curious about what parts uh, run on the show. Be curious about what you can do to shift that and be gentle with yourselves, knowing that all the time you are doing the best you can. And sometimes we need some support for moving outside and beyond that. Take care, have a bodacious week. Bye everybody.